if for some people who don't know me, I always start with I'm Jesse. Uh, I have six kids, all girls, and they are wonderful. I have a beautiful wife who was feeling a little bit under the weather today, so I gave her the pass. I said, like, you can stay home. Or like she told me she was going to stay home. That's how it works. <laughs> and I said, yes, dear, that's completely fine with me. <laughs> Bill knows how it goes, right? I think we all do. All right, so I had a, um, when I was putting together this message, I know that I wanted to be um, very Holy um, Spirit-centered in my message. And, you know, I was going through um, scriptures, and um, as I was going through scriptures, I had all these scriptures, and I wanted to tie the Holy Spirit into this, into that, into this. Um, But the way that I think that I can articulate it best is my experiences with the Holy Spirit, um, because he is he's very he is very much to be experienced, and the way he talks to you and the things you do when he 's talking to you um, so I just wanted to share a little bit about you know I had a really fun two weeks um, this these past two weeks, and i didn 't go anywhere special i didn 't go do anything. I just did my life as normal, and it was actually a lot of fun so I want to share um, I went to Blairstown, I believe it was, and somebody met me at a gas station and they said, hey, do you do masonry work? And I said, absolutely. And he says, like, I'm having a hard time finding a mason. Would you, would you come on down to my town and give me a bid? I can't get anything going. And that really moves my heart because God put me there to find him because he can't find anybody to do the work. I mean, you just got to go on Google and you can get somebody to get some estimates going. So... I, I, I hear that in my heart when he asks me uh, to come check out his job, and I, I know that the Lord is up to something. Um, so I go out there. He says, hey, I tried to schedule it with him a couple times. He couldn't be there, couldn't be there, couldn't be there. So I was like, well, you know, I still got a job to do. I'm just going to go ahead and check out this job. Um, so I get there. I call the guy. Um, normally I go out there. I measure the job. I take pictures, and then I get on to the next one because I'm, like, really busy throughout my day. But it was really different. Like the drive there was beautiful. I was just talking with the Lord. And, um, when I drive in a car, I really weird. Some people think it's weird, but I do not listen to music. Um, I, (laughs) come on. Like I, I like, I don't listen to anything, you know, I don't listen to worship music. I don't like watch a video or anything like that. If I listen to worship music when I'm driving, somebody's going to get in an accident. I'm just going to be crying, a crying mess. God, you love me so much. Um, so that's like when I, like, I have a lot of conversations with God when I'm driving because it's just me and him and there's nothing but my thoughts. So I feel like the Lord wants me to not listen to music. And then I've just become accustomed to it where I ride with somebody in the vehicle and they're like kind of weirded out a little bit because I'm like, there's, there's like silence in the car, but there's not silence in my head because me and him are all day long going back and forth. Um, so as I was driving out there, I, I recognize what I'm feeling when I pull up into this driveway and there's nobody there and my windows are down. It's nice weather, measure the job. And then I decided to sit down and sketch it out just cause I don't want our estimator to be confused cause there's a lot of corners and stuff like that. Um, and I get done and I put it and I go to start the car and then I feel in my spirit, let's just wait, let's just wait here. So, okay. God wants to have a conversation with me. So me and God start talking, and he was just, yeah, I, want to, I want to cry right now because it's like when he speaks to me, it's real, and, it's, and he says such nice things to me. Remember when we did this. Remember when we did that. And then as he's talking, uh, this car pulls up, and she whips in, and she parks, and she's like, oh, good, I didn't miss you. I knew I had to get here. And it was the, the homeowner's wife. And we had not made an appointment to meet each other or anything. I was supposed to meet with a husband. He said um, he's there, so she had this thing where, She felt like she had to get off work to go there. I see you, Lord. I know what's going on. (laughs) So we get out and we start talking. I um, explain the job a little bit to her. And then at the end of it, I say, man, I really hope that we can bless you with a good estimate. And um, that right there was the, the, the trigger and the entry point into what happens next in our conversation. Um, cause we can just go and we can talk about the job and we can talk about money and all that kind of stuff, but that's not what I want to talk about. My main goal is to love this lady and, and have her feel more loved by God in our conversation. So I'm going to say something as simple as, 
I hope that we can bless you. And so when I said that, it opened up this door and she was just like, oh my gosh, you don't know how it feels to hear you say that. And I thought you were just coming out here for an estimate. And um, she starts to tell me what she does for work. And it's like, it's, it's pretty cool what she does. It's like, um, she like is an advocate, a health advocate or something like that. So it's like, she's a Christian in this environment in a hospital. And I'm just like, oh, I'm glad that's not my job because that would be really tough to like skirt around the the lines of uh, talking about Jesus and encouraging people and stuff like that. So as far as me, I can just straight out go out and talk about Jesus all I want, but some people have different rules. Um, so it turns out that um, she really needed to be encouraged this day, like really needed it. And it was so cool. And she started, you know, talking about her husband and stuff like this. And um, I can tell by what she's saying that she, like, I can feel Jesus when she's talking. And then, um, I start to get the feeling like she was like my wife was with her husband and you know, she's all in, but you know, he loves Jesus, but is he really, is he really going after it? Like she is. Um, so I really got a chance to share my testimony with her about how my wife just loved me through being a drug dealer, loved me through being an alcoholic, loved me over like not prioritizing our family over anything else. And I got to tell her like, don't grow weary and doing good. You're doing good. Are you loving your husband? Yes. Let God do the rest. So it ended up with uh, me praying for her. Um, she said she'd love that. And I started praying for her, and I felt the Holy Spirit just coming and coming and coming and coming. And there was just straight fire. And I was laughing with my friends because um, sometimes when you're praying for somebody, she was like doing this thing, you know? And I was thinking in my head, we're out here in the middle of the country. What happens if this lady goes out? You know what I mean? Do I stay here and pray for her more? Do I back up into my truck and go? So me, me and my friends, me and my friends had a really good laugh. And then like, what if somebody pulls up and I'm just like, thank you, Jesus. And then she's, I don't know. It's just like, it's just like these things that were going on in my head. And, um, but I didn't let that hold back because God is good. I'm going to, I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep going and I'm going to keep declaring what he is telling me to say. I got to do this while I'm working guys. Like I, I, I was doing an estimate for somebody and I got to minister and even like cooler, she was ministering to me too. So it's not a one way street, you know, it's not like every time I minister to somebody, I get ministered to as well because I get to work with Jesus and I get to be his hands and his feet and I get to, I get to see it. So when they get touched, I get touched and I can't believe I get to do that. And I was just, it was so simple, you know, nothing really, really huge happened, but everything happened. We got to encourage each other and it was just what she needed. And if I would have did what I normally did and left, what would have happened? You know, she would have pulled up, oh, I guess I missed him, but God still would have found a way to, to get her ministered and get her encouraged. But I got to be that person. And I thought that was really cool. And that is just, um, what I'm trying to explain in that whole situation is hearing the Holy Spirit in that atmosphere is absolutely true and it's absolutely real and it's absolutely subtle sometimes when he was says no you can just hang out here why don't you just why don't we just talk to each other a little longer why don't you not be worried about your day because i wasn't trying to like find her and minister and i had no idea about her but god was just saying hey let's just chill out just come and be with me for a little longer i think there's a song like that that wrecks me every single time so that was really fun. And then the next day, um, I go and I pick up this vanity off of Facebook because uh, we're building Airbnbs up at, in, in Holden. And um, I message him and I see that we have a friend in common. And this friend in common we have is like a pretty fire guy. His name is Brent Kelly. I love this guy. He's super awesome. He's down in Tennessee. If you guys ever want to Google his ministry or anything, I 100% recommend it. Um, but I get there and God was just like, the first thing you need to do is say, hey, I know like we have friends in common. And then as soon as they opened up the garage door, he's, he's wearing a God loves you sweatshirt. And I'm like, Hey, you know, Brent Kelly. And then they like froze and they're like, how do you know Brent Kelly? And, and I got to explain how um, it's crazy how I meet people. I met him all the way in Florida and then all this other kind of stuff. And um, he was just up here preaching and everything. Um, but what was really cool about this opportunity is we could have just picked up a vanity, but the Lord told me on the way there that I have, I have some knowledge that they, not, they need to hear about, you know? And, um, what was cool is, um, we loaded up the vanity. We kind of had some chit chat and some talking about Jesus and we loaded up the vanity. And then before I can even say, Hey, let me pray for you. 
they say, hey, we need to pray for you. And I'm like, oh, come on. Yes, it happens to me. Come on. So I was just really touched that they beat me to the punch. And then they, they um, laid hands on me and we prayed. And it was, it, was, it was powerful. It was super impactful. And it meant a lot to me that the, that the Lord would speak to them to pray for me. You know what I mean? Who am I? <laughs> um, and then I got to turn around and lay the knowledge on them that the Lord was telling me to lay on them. And that was, you know, different um, speakers, um, different books that we read, um, some worship songs. And I said, hey, I know that we're, we're Christians here, um, and you guys um, seem pr- pretty charismatic. You know, you b- believe in healing and prophecy and stuff like that. Um, can I just share my testimony with you? And um, always be ready with your testimony. And that's what I think we're going to – that's what I want people to know, too, is that you should have, like, a one-minute testimony – a three minute testimony, a five minute testimony, and then your testimony, you know, because you don't know how long you have to share your testimony. And um, I remember back in the youth group that I was with, we used to practice our testimonies on each other. So we'd say, okay, you have two and a half minutes. Ready? Go. Hi, I'm Jesse. You know, I have six kids and um, I just want to tell you how God moved on my life. Do you have a minute so I can explain it? And so always be ready with something like that. So I was ready to share my testimony um, with them. And as I'm sharing it, they're like in disbelief. And I'm like, why is something as simple as sharing my testimony um, with people who already know Jesus? Why is this rocking it so much? God, thank you for my ability to listen to you. Because my testimony was almost exactly his testimony. Like he grew up in a a different kind of church um, since I grew up in Presbyterian church. So he grew up in a church and the Holy spirit wasn't really talked about. And he was a drug dealer. And then he met this girl and it was like, everything was just like spot on with this guy. And then I got to share after that, I got to share about when I got baptized by the Holy spirit. And then I got to share with him, um, encouraging words on prophetic words of wit, like reading somebody's mail, knowing something, hearing from God, telling him, dude, you hear from God, same testimony. You hear from him, open your mouth and speak it. It's going to be a little tricky at the beginning, and you're going to feel this squeeze, but that's the devil. And every time he squeezes you, you recognize that now, and you go for it. And it's going to be powerful. So it was really cool, and he didn't come into uh, charismatic or whatever um, until like eight months ago. So I'm like really excited for this guy that he's starting to just crack open the things of of the supernatural. And I got to tell him um, what it's hard why I said it's um, it's not confidence it's Godfidence so like it's our it's our confidence in God and sometimes our confidence will look like arrogance but it's not it's it's our confidence in who He is and who He made us to be and I to tell all that I got to do that you know what I mean there's opportunities in your workplace and like I said I work in construction and I like see people and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's so easy to get caught up in doing our work. Um, but what I know, what he told me to do is go and make disciples. He told me to love God and he told me to love people. So why am I putting my work in front of that? You know what I mean? He gave me the opportunity to work so I can share the gospel. He gave me the opportunity to be in this church so I can share the gospel. He gave me the opportunity to have a car to go get gas in a gas station so I can love people at that gas station. He didn't give me a car to go from A to B. He gave it to me so I can love people on the way to A to B. He's so good like that. So this happens in the workplace. I wrote my notes. This happens in the workplace. Let's start to make room for it. You might have questions like, how can I get into this conversation? Like if I'm, so if you guys are putting yourself in your place at work or your place in a daily um, conversation, you say, well, how can I have this conversation with somebody? And, and my response is it's very, very easy. Just talk about Jesus. Don't add to and don't take away from because then it's going to be confusing and it's going to be hard. It's simple. He loves you. He gave his life for you. He's alive and he's living and he's in heaven right now. So if you, what really worked for me is I just fell madly in love with Jesus. And now I entered into a relationship with Jesus. And therefore, so like I'm in a relationship with my wife and I can talk about my wife all day long. I can tell you how pretty she is, where we met, what, like the way she speaks to me, how she cooks for me. 
I can I can do all these things about people I'm in a relationship with, okay? So with Jesus, Jesus is not a religion. Jesus is a relationship. So if he was a religion, we'd have to remember all these things like the Pharisees and all that kind of stuff. We'd have to remember what we read, remember what to say. If they say this, say that. If they say this, say that. No, I'm talking about the one whom I love and who loves me. Like, come on. How can I not talk about him? How can I not know what he looks like? How can I not know what he smells like? You know what I mean? Like, how can I I experience him on a daily basis? So therefore, it's very, very easy for me to talk to him and to talk about him. So if I'm talking to some, like, you guys, you guys track with what I'm saying? So like, I can talk about my wife all day. I should be able to talk about Jesus all day. And if I'm not talking about Jesus all day, like I love him and I know him and that I'm in a relationship with him, if they don't feel that I love him when I talk about him, I need to go back into that closet and I need to say, Jesus, show me how to love you. Jesus, how do you love me? Because more importantly, he loves you. And that's never been that's never been something that has been up for question. So the difference um, I shared this I think in the the elders meeting leadership meeting it was like um, the difference between um, Peter and John. Okay, Peter said nobody loves Jesus more than I do. There's nobody in the history that'll ever love Jesus more than I do. And then what was John saying? My favorite man <laughs> next to Jesus in the Bible, John the Beloved. What was he saying? He says Jesus loves me so much and then when i heard that and i grasped onto it where were these guys at the crucifixion one was denying him and one was at his feet i want to be that one i want to be so focused on how much he loves me then i can be effective out there and tell them how much he loves you and i used to go around and saying Oh, I mean, my friends have a joke, you know, like I'm his favorite. When he, when he opens up his, his phone, I'm his background screen. When he opens up his wallet, all my kids' pictures are the first ones to come out. And, and that's the way he makes me feel. He makes me feel like I am the one and the only, and there's nobody else he wants to look at more than me. There's nobody he wants to talk to more than me. And I need you guys to understand that that's the same exact way he feels about you. So if you don't feel that love from Jesus, because like I said, Jesus isn't a religion, he's a relationship, and Jesus isn't legalism, he's intimacy. He's not a guy that's gonna, that wants to tell you, don't do this, don't do that. And you know, that's what like a lot of kids think that God is, is he's a big man upstairs that says, hey, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this, you can't do that, but really what he's looking for is intimacy. So if he's, if that's, that's religion doing that, and that's legalism telling you that, but it's not a relationship and intimacy, because if you're in a relationship with him, the intimacy is going to come. Like with my wife, we can stay separate, you know, we can, we can be in the same house, we can be in a relationship with each other, but what it takes is that intimacy. How are you? How was your day? I love you. Like, let me rub your feet. You know what I mean? Like, that's the thing. And like, I'm not a foot guy. I really don't like feet, but I, I rub my wife's feet because I know she likes it and she loves it and it makes her feel loved. So that's like the kind of intimacy that there is. I put it, I, I set aside time and I'm intentional with my wife because I, I want to get to know her more and I want to love her better. And I want to, I want to do what she wants me to do. So if we're in a relationship with Jesus, I need to have that intimacy with Jesus Man, I could talk about that all day long. Actually, that's probably what I talk about every time I come up here and preach is I'm telling you guys that he loves you, he loves you, but I just, like, there's there's nothing else that I find more important to preach about than Jesus because he is the one that did everything. I was reading, um, and I don't really preach out of the Passion Translation, but I was reading this this week, and it overcame me, like, so much. Um In Song of Songs five six five fifteen, um, and it's in the Passion Translation, so it'll be a, a, quite a bit different. Um, I just love that the way they articulated Jesus here, and it like I've read this every day for more than one one time a day. All right, it says he is steadfast in all he does. His ways are the ways of righteousness, based on truth and holiness. None can rival him, but all will be amazed by him. Most sweet are his kisses, even his whispers of love. 
His del- he is delightful in every way and perfect from every viewpoint. If you ask me why I love him so, O oh brides to be, it is because there is none like him to me. Everything about him fills me with holy desire, and now he is my beloved, my friend forever. Whew. Uh, come on, man. If you ask me why I love him so, O oh brides to be, it is because there is none like him to me. That's it right there. There can be lots and lots and lots in this world, but he is all to me. There is no one like him to me. I cannot compare him to anybody because he is all. Yeah, it's just, I mean, that just like, I read that like multiple times this week and I'm just like, Jesus, you are altogether lovely. Because in the, like, uh, I think in the King James, that's the, that's the area where it says he is altogether lovely. And he is, he is all things lovely. And he made all things lovely. And the proof is you're me, you're looking at it. <laughs> the most lovely person I know. <laughs> Next to my wife and my little shot, all well, my kids, man. So this is what you do when you say, when you say yes to Jesus, you enter into a relationship with him. So most people think that when they said yes to Jesus, it was like crossing that finish line but it's not. You just put your feet in the chucks and you said yes, and he said, boom, let's go. And now we're running that race. And that's in the Bible. You can find that. Because we're not done when we say yes. Because now it's just like I have, like when I when I asked my wife to go out with me, I, I entered into a relationship with her. And that relationship will take take work. It'll take commitment. It'll take showing up. It'll take doing what she asks me to do, even though I don't want to do it. But God will always ask you to do something and you may not feel like you want to do it but that's because your desire is bigger than the desire he put in your heart and that makes me say god i want to do whatever you want me to do because i know that when i do it always works out like it always does but when i do what i want to do it's not necessarily the greatest i think nathan was preaching on that something about buying a bike or something like that and that touched my wife that was really cool we me and her got to have a good conversation about that it was really great All right, let's see. I thought there was a clock behind me for some reason, and it's right in front of me. There we go. All right, let's go to uh, Matthew 5, 3. And again, super practical. But this is what I've said at the big first part of this message. I want to tie into um, the scripture here. So what I want to try to display is how did I get to that point that I am at right now? And this is the key that helped me get to that point. So in Matthew 5, 3, I'm going to read it in three different versions. The first one's the ESV. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So if I go to the NLT, it says, God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. And then I'm going to go into the Amplified. Blessed, which means spiritually prosperous, happy, and to be admired, are the poor in spirit, which means those devoid of spiritual arrogance, those who regard themselves as insignificant. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven, both now and forever. So very simple, 5-3. And when I read this, I thought in my head, God, what good is it to be poor? You know what I mean? Because when I heard poor in spirit, I thought like, what do you mean? I'm lacking. I'm like lacking you. Like I'm lack because you're the only spirit I want. And um, he really got to just touch and lean on my heart on this where it was um, blessed. And I always say um, in my head, blessed are the poor in spirit for they will see God. Um, because if if heaven is on earth and the the kingdom of heaven is yours do you know that that doesn't mean that when you die it's that kingdom of heaven up there there's there's kingdom of heaven on earth right now and we get to live in and we get to experience that and we get to to eat sleep and breathe the supernatural which is what really pushed me over was okay how do i become poor in spirit and i started to uh, do some talking with god and 
it was the single most one of the most powerful times in my life when I realized that I am absolutely nothing. Like I am nothing apart from him. There's nothing I can do without you. And when I realized my absolute poverty, how absolute lost I was without him, then I could start to do work. Then I could start to have a real meaningful relationship because like in the Amplified, it says um, void of spiritual arrogance because God knew that if he didn't tear me down to the very, 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 very base of me, that it wouldn't be good later. So I, I needed to know that it, without him, I am nothing. With you, I am everything. That sounds sounds really easy to get as I say it out loud, but it was a really big moment for me because I don't want to be arrogant a time in my life because if I'm pointing at me, I'm not pointing at him, and therefore I'm not doing what he told me to do because he said in all things point to me even and make that clear every time you speak that it's not about me, it's about him. So until I until I realized that I was like I don't even know like I I can articulate this better than in my head than I can out loud but until you guys know that there is absolutely nothing you can do you can't save up enough money you can't say the right words you can't do anything until you realize that it is absolutely not you and it's him and you can't do it without him in every step of the way because he points your path he makes it straight. He leads you. He, he's living water. So pride comes before the fall, and that was something that God was really heavy on me when I first started in ministry um, because when I started speaking, it was like lots of engagements and this and that, and you're great and all that. And then he got to strip me down, and it was beautiful because he says, if there is any of you left, there can be none of me. And I was just like, Phew goodness because he is all that is in me and he is in me and he is me and i need to like we say like set myself on fire and let people watch and burn and if they touch me they'll catch fire too and that needs to happen we need we need people that are head over heels madly in love with jesus it's really funny i just had a thought in my head i was looking over at greg and it's 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 gonna happen with the youth it's gonna start here with the youth and then once we can we can replicate that, it's going to be a wildfire because these kids are going to go back and they're going to talk to their parents and their uncles and their cousins and they're going to say, how are you so different? I'm not different. He's so good. It's Jesus in me that makes me different. I can't wait. All right, now I'm going to go to Old Testament. Second Samuel. Five. Sorry, Second Samuel seven, eighteen. Sorry, let me catch up with my notes. Okay, Second Samuel seven eighteen, and I'm gonna. What really stood out to me on this part it says that then King David went in and sat before the Lord and prayed, "Who am I, O Sovereign Lord, and what is my family that you have brought me this far?" So I've read Second Samuel a ton, you know, and um, and I, I know a decent amount about King David. Um, but when I was putting together this message and I was talking about um, the poor in spirit and how we are in absolute poverty other than knowing that he is who he says he is and who he shows he is. Um, it was really cool that God brought me into here. And then it really took me by and it says, then King David went in and sat before the Lord. So just that sentence right there would lead me to believe that David stole himself away and he sat with just him and the Lord. So what makes me think I, 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 I don't do the same thing, you know what I mean? 
I, if he does this to go have a conversation with God, I need to do this to have a conversation with God. And this is actually a really successful point in my life when I realize that if you just go away and shut the door and you tell the kids it's okay, that'll be done in a little bit, you get a lot of work done with God. When you're intentional, like I think that was the first message I gave, is when you're intentional about setting an appointment with God and keeping it, he is overcome by that. Okay. And what really absolutely blew my mind, and I said, yes, Lord, I know why you brought me here. And he says, who am I, O sovereign Lord? Are you kidding me? King David is going to say, who am I? <laughs> the one that slayed the giant? I mean, look at the first part of your name. King, King David had this poor in spirit mentality that said, who am I? And it just, I was like weeping when I read it because it was so powerful to me that the King David would just be like, God, who am I? Who am I that you would spare my family? Are you kidding me, <laughs> King David? You've done tons of stuff for the Lord. And it just, it got me to realize that even the king, King David, has this mentality that's poor in spirit. So he is, he's on to something. And it just reiterates into our life, who am I? I'm nobody. I'm nobody without you. And, I, and if I don't have you, I'm still nobody. But if I do have you and I'm in a relationship with you, I'm your son in whom you're well pleased. All I know is that God's, God's excited about me and I'm excited about him. And that, that makes the gospel very, very easy to preach. Because all I get to do is talk about the one who loves me. That was all for Second Samuel. I wasn't really going too far into it. I just uh, wanted to highlight a, a poor in spirit on, on Matthew and Samuel. It's everywhere. So look into your Bibles, and if, if you really want to dig more into the poor in spirit, ask God, show me what poor in spirit looks like. It'll be really easy because he'll, he'll, he'll point to people in this church right here and their servant leadership. And I didn't start this time with that. I just I, I know I had to bring it up, though. So what you guys are, you guys are poor in spirit, you guys are servants, and you know that it's about him, and then we can help it be about them. So I am cruising a little bit fast through this, which is good. That'll leave some time for ministry time. Um, so I wanted to share where... Um, I had a, a shift in my life. I feel like I feel like there's tons of shifts in my life, and I can point to key points to where they happen. Um, but I remember that um, I said yes to the Lord, and um, I shared a shared a testimony with you guys about um, how I how I quit drinking, and then I went to this thing called Power and Love, and then um, I started praying for people. I started trying to minister to people. And I was just getting screamed at and yelled at. And the people that I prayed for weren't getting healed and all this kind of stuff. And I said, Lord, you sent me down here. What's going on? I love these people. And he was like, Jesse, that's really great, but you're just not sincere enough. And I, I remember sharing this, probably one of my first or second messages. I just wanted to catch some people up um, that I, I had not quit smoking pot. And I was, you know, I quit drinking but I wasn't just fully obedient to the Lord and what he was telling me to do. And I thought that I could do my own thing. And then I thought like, watch, I'll pray for people and they'll still get healed because God is still good. But I was like, I was going through something in my heart and he needed that to be out of there before he would uh, release me to uh, start doing stuff for him. So I said, yes, I will. And I called my pastor and all that. And uh, the very next person I prayed for got healed. Um, and through this obedience that I just learned, um, it was cool how you just like, ha like an aha moment. I, I listen to you and st stuff happens. And I didn't want this guy to get healed so I could look great because I didn't take a picture with him. It didn't go up on Facebook. None of that stuff. I just wanted to love people the way I saw it in the Bible and the way I saw Jesus do it. And it was happening because God said, you're not sincere enough. Oh, you want to see sincere? I'll give up everything. And he's like, good. That's what I need because <laughs> salvation is free, but it'll cost you everything. Yeah, I love you, Jesus. 
so that night um we had a session and there's this guy robbie dawkins up there um and i love this guy i kind of grew up on like todd white and robbie dawkins and these guys like meant a lot to me and um i had been really really nervous that night like particularly anxious like i'm feeling like not anxious wouldn't be the right word i'm expectant expectant and kind of scared it was hard it was a hard feeling to um explain but i knew what was coming and that's why i felt that way because i knew that when this guy preaches people get baptized by the holy spirit in my heart the whole service was like boom 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 boom, boom when he was sharing testimonies and stuff like this and I remember he kept looking at his watch, and he kept looking at his watch, and he was just like, okay, we got time, we got time. And in my head, I'm thinking, maybe I can skip this one. <laughs> maybe I can go back to my church and get prayed for and get baptized by the Holy Spirit and stuff like that, because uh, I knew that that's what was going to happen, and I knew that was what the enemy was trying to tell me to get up. Don't you have to go to the bathroom? Get up and leave. Call your wife. You haven't called your wife in a while, have you? I mean, I'm sure she's worried about you. You've been in this service for all but like 45 minutes. I'm, I'm sure she she really wants to speak with you. Oh, don't you want to talk to your kids? It was just like all these things that I was just like, I had to say no. And I had to keep right where I was. Because I knew, I hear it, and I still feel it. That I could have just got up and I could have left. Um, but then he uh, he says, okay. And it was cool because it was like he was waiting. You know what I mean? It was like he was waiting for a specific moment to do it because he was hearing from the Lord. And I guarantee there was a lot more people sitting in there that were going through the same thing I was going through. I should get up. I should go do something. Man, my, my legs hurt. My back hurts. Whatever it is. And now that, I, now that I think about it, I realize that Robbie was listening to the Holy Spirit. And he knew a time that it was going to happen. But what God wanted us to do is God wanted us to make those decisions. He wanted us to make those decisions to to stay in the seat and to be present and to receive the Holy Spirit. And it was really so, so fun because it was the moment that Jesus became absolutely real to me and experienced the way I thought, the way I talked. It was just an absolute shift happened real quick. And he didn't really do anything super elegant or, or anything. He just said, all right, anybody who wants to receive, it's time to receive. Stand up. That was my first step. I had to stand up. He said, okay, now put out your hands. That was my next step. I put out my hands. He said, okay, now close your eyes. And he's like, just begin to talk to Jesus. Tell him that you love him. Oh, I love you, Jesus. And then um, it was really cool because he was like, Holy Spirit, come. And then when he said that, I felt like this, like my feet just got heavy, like I was anchored into the ground. And then I started to cry. Man, he's so good. And I started to cry because I felt so loved. I've never felt so loved in my life until I let Jesus love me, until I put out my hands and I said, I receive you, I receive your spirit. And then after then, I just had these tears that were rolling down my cheeks. And then he was just like, people who have been baptized by the Holy Spirit, anybody who has their hands out like this, you go, you lay hands and you pray and you say exactly what God is telling you to say. And this guy comes up to me, and he lays his hands on me, and he goes, Brother, are you ready to receive? And I I was just wanted to be like, get away from me, dude. Like, geez, I'm having such a beautiful moment, and he's getting all intense. And I, it started to take me away a little bit from Jesus, and I started to get mad at this guy for laying hands on me during an intimate moment with the Lord that I was having that I've never had before. But then that was my first opportunity to love this person and let him minister. It was just really cool how it all happened in my head. And then he started telling me things about myself that nobody knew. And I could have told him, no thanks, I'm good. But no, it's like my first step into, into loving God and listening to the Holy Spirit and letting this guy pray. And he was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, nicotine addiction? I say, no, right now in Jesus' name, we break it. And I was like, oh, that's weird. 
because I just quit smoking like two days ago because God was just like, yeah, I don't need it anymore. I'm going to be praying for people and all this kind of stuff. And then he was like, yeah, yeah, okay, alcoholism, go now in Jesus' name. And I was just like, oh, I just like felt this tightness in my stomach. And then he goes, one more, one more, drug addiction, leave. And it was just like this tightness in my stomach went up to my chest and it felt like freedom. It was just like... And it's not like all about the experiences. I'm just telling you what I felt when it was happening. And there's no right or wrong way that it like it happens to you, okay? But when he told me that, this guy doesn't know me. He doesn't nothing. And he was just like, I pray for your family and your girls. And he was just like going through all of it. And I was just like, <laughs> this is it. And then, he was, and then I started crying. And I was trying to say words. And he was like, yes, that's it. That's it. That's it. Keep talking. And then all of a sudden, I'm praying in tongues. And, like, I wasn't even, nobody was telling me to, and it wasn't even on my grid. I was just crying and trying to talk, and then it just came out, and I haven't been able to stop ever since. Yeah, it's such a beautiful, like, when you don't know what to say, pray in tongues. And, and when, you're, when you're at the gas station and you're looking at that person, I'm always praying in tongues. Like, it's always happening with me. And when I when I do, it's like a it's like I'm plugged in. It's like I'm plugged into the source, and I I, I feel like I'm, I get downloads and stuff like that. Because when you don't know what to pray, the Holy Spirit prays on your behalf, and I will never miss an opportunity. Um, what if people hear you? What if this? So what? <laughs> then hopefully they get affected by it. What if it's affected negatively? It's not my problem. Because God gave me this, and I'm going to use it to its full capacity. And what was really crazy, um, my wife had scheduled uh, my flight to leave early, um, and there was still a day left in the conference, and um, I decided to skip the last little portion of the conference, and I just got wrecked by God. I am full of the Holy Spirit. I feel like I am just walking on clouds. So I get in my Uber, and I say, take me downtown. And I believe I was in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, I think that's where it was. And there was a parade going on, so I just got hungry. I was just like, oh, boy. I prayed for, like, two people yesterday, and they got healed. Another person got touched by God. Now I got baptized by the Holy Spirit. I am, and that was the day I prayed for, like, 55 people on the way from Ohio back to South Dakota. And um, I want to highlight a really cool testimony, and then I'll be done. I hope this made sense today. Did it, I hope it. I hope, hope we were tying in. I just want to share my experiences and how I feel about the Holy Spirit and what happened to me. So we're out there, and there's this lady, and she has like a like a finger cast on or whatever. And I'm like, boom, super easy, just a finger, right? So I say, hey, ma'am, what happened to your finger? And she was an older lady, and she was kind of. I could just feel this like bitterness in her, like you know, don't talk to me. And I was just like, hey, what happened to your finger? And she was like, it broke. <laughs> And I was like, cool. And she was like, what the heck is cool about that? And I was like, well, hey, listen, I'm Jesse. Actually, I'm not important, but he is. I'm going to pray for your finger, and it's going to be healed. And she was like, okay, yeah, sure. I was like, will you let me do that? And she was like, yeah, go ahead. And she, like, put out her finger like that. And, like, there's, like, there's like a parade, you know, there's a bunch of people and all this kind of stuff. And what was funny is I didn't see anybody else around me and I didn't care about anybody else around me because I saw what God saw and it was her, even if it was just a finger. Okay. Trust me, the story gets pretty interesting. So, um, I, I lay my hands on the finger as softly as I can. And I'm just like, Jesus, heal this finger. God, you know, what needs to be done. This is a simple prayer. And I started for the first time I got praying in tongues. It was just like, Phew. I feel excited talking about it because it was such a good experience. So I prayed for her, and I said, check it out. And then she was like, it's in a cat, like it's in a metal thing. And I'm like, well, take it off. And she was just like, I'm not taking it off. And then I feel this absolute over, God overtook me, and he said, how about your back? And then she was like, my back. And she just froze, and she turned white, and she <laughs> realized that, she wasn't shuffling like this anymore. She could she could do this. So it was really, really super cool. I prayed for her finger. She's like, but you prayed for my finger. But 
but you prayed for my finger and it's like all she could say and and my back and you prayed for my finger but my back and i'm like yes i prayed for your finger but god knew about your back and i was like that's what god does he doesn't he doesn't just do a finger he does the whole thing because he doesn't fix things he makes them brand new and she was crying she started crying you don't know how long i've struggled with this and i said i know i don't but he does and it's time to be done struggling with it and she's crying and i'm like jesus and there's just tons of people walking by and this elderly lady's crying and i have my hands up and i'm screaming jesus then this guy's like hey get away from her what are you doing and i'm just like bro come on man jesus i don't care who who's jesus and i'm like he just healed her back and then she was like no 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 it's okay so they thought i was like accosting this old lady that was just crying and crying and crying that just had this absolutely powerful encounter with the king of kings and the lord of lords and the enemy was trying to say get out of here and he was trying to cause disruption and all that kind of stuff and she was like no 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 he's right he's right this man right here this man healed me he laid his hands on me and he healed me and i was like what are you talking about i was like no i didn't I was like, he healed you. And then this guy was riding by, and then he was like, what happened? And then one guy was like, well, I guess Jesus healed this lady's back. Huh. Think he can heal my back? And then I was just like, yep, he sure can. And then she was like, and that's, you know, I think that's when she said, oh, he's, he's telling the truth. He healed me. He healed me. And I says, no, I didn't. It was Jesus. And here, let me prove it to you. And I went to go lay my hands on him, and I had this feeling like the finger's getting pointed back at me. So what happens if I lay my hands on this guy and I pray for him again? Are they really going to know it's Jesus? So I said, ma'am, you put your hand on him and we'll pray. I, I've never done that. It doesn't matter. Did Jesus, did he or did he not make your back brand new? He did. I was like, okay, Jesus is going to make his brand new. And she laid her hands on him. <sighs> Simple prayer. He's healed too. I mean, it was just like unbelievable and we get to do that we get to live this life we get to not pass people by okay and um there's just so many instances even this week where god cares about the small things as well i was on the phone with greg okay and i'm going to olathe and there's like a whole bunch of jammed up traffic you can see it's like 14 minutes behind i ain't got time for that and I'm talking to Greg and talking to Greg and we're talking about the Lord and we're talking about youth group and I can just feel the spirit on our conversation and then pretty soon I missed my exit two exits ago. And I'm like, what the, huh? Oh my God. And I was just like, I was on the phone, I was like, is it true? I was on the phone with Greg and I was just like, I just passed by all of that crash all that wreck all that stuff and it i didn't have to go 14 minutes because the lord cares about that little miss two exit take this little shortcut i don't know my way around kansas city i've been here for two years and i still put the gps in to go to lee summit like i just don't have i just don't have that grid sometimes you know like if i get on the interstate here and i go that way i know the exit but do i know the exit you know so that's why i am with god too i gotta plug god in he's like hey you show me every way even though i think i know the way um so he cares about these these little things like me missing traffic like that i'm paddling on a kayak and peyton's like man we're getting towards the end of our trip i just wish we would have found a big muscle like because we have uh some like crawfish and stuff like that and a turtle and we're putting a terrarium or whatever they're called in our house and we want everything to like the mussels will filter the water and the the crawfish will eat the algae and then the turtles will live happy and free and they'll never touch each other but god cares about this so much that he told me uh look on the bank to the right and you'll find it like he told me that very very specifically boom 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 there it is, paddled up, got it with my paddle. Peyton says, no freaking way. And I'm like, how cool is Jesus? Like, that stuff is real. That's what he wants. He cares about these little things in your life just as much as the big things. So if we're having a conversation with him all the time, imagine what you've missed, you know what I mean, by not just listening to God. And just this week, too, I was going, and um, I missed I missed where I was supposed to go because I was on the phone with my wife. And then I turned right, and then I could have done a U-turn, but I thought in my head, no, nah, that's illegal. 
What do I care? It's a U-turn in the in the freaking, you know, whatever. Anybody could do a U-turn. Just boom, boom, back up. I said, no, nah, I'm going to have integrity, even in the small things like that. So I kept going, and then I found a uh, a tricycle. Like, like not just a tricycle, but it was one with, like, some big meaty tires, and it was in, like, perfect condition. It was, like, it looked brand new. It had springs on the seats and everything. God brought me that way so I could pick up that for my kids. Like, come on. That little thing he said, I got you. And that's what I want you guys to realize this week, that the Holy Spirit is talking to you, even in the little things. So, I mean, always be having this conversation. When I, like, I'm driving, I'm talking to somebody, we're always having that conversation because I have the Holy Spirit. And um, uh, we, don't, we don't even necessarily have to welcome him because he's always here. He's always with us. He's always there. Holy Spirit, thank you for being here. Thank you for being here right now because I can't be separate. And something that I always say is, um, and I, this is just for like for what I say, and I don't know if it has any uh, teaching application, but it's something I always go to is, Holy Spirit, let me never grieve you because I know that that's a big deal. Jesus, let me never add to or take away from you because you are already everything. So during this ministry time that we're going to go into, um, if you haven't received the Holy Spirit, I ask you to come forward, um, and us and the elders will lay hands on you. Okay, If you want to receive the Holy Spirit, come up, and we will pray for you. Okay, If, if you have received the Holy Spirit, come up and lay hands on him. During this ministry time, if you have somebody sitting next to you, give them a pat and say, do you need me to go up there with you? Because it's a scary thing sometimes. It seems scary because it's unknown. But it's so real, and it's such a real step that you have to take. When you say, God, I want to live myself in abandonment to you. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you here. Thank you that you're here. God, I ask you right now to take off the blinders. God, I ask you right now to take away the distractions. God, I thank you that we're not thinking about our week ahead, but we're only thinking about you. God, I ask that there's a big whiteboard and that they have all of our thoughts on them. God, I ask that you wipe it clean right now. God, let us not think another thought other than you. Jesus, Jesus, we worship you. We love you. There's no one like you. You are altogether lovely. You are altogether good. Jesus, I just ask you to move on the hearts right now. God, I just ask you to move on their hearts. Holy Spirit, I just ask you to speak. God, I thank you that nobody here is unworthy. I just take away unworthiness right now in Jesus' name, that if you're struggling with why would God choose me, I just take that away right now because you are chosen, you are called. I just hear somebody saying like they're not qualified. God qualifies the chosen. He doesn't pick the qualified. So I just take away unworthiness right now. God, I I ask you to raise up a humble church. I ask you to raise up a church that's poor in spirit, that recognizes their need for you. Jesus, it is only you. It is nothing else. God, we put you first in our life. Jesus, we sign up and we say yes every day. God, I ask for new strategies on how how to listen to you. God, I ask to give us new strategies to hear your voice. Whether it's cutting out phone time, it's cutting out music, it's cutting out 
whatever I need to do, God, I sign up and I say yes. Because it's just you. And I am nothing without you, God. I just declare that I am poor in spirit. And the kingdom of heaven is at my grasp.